Shavu Atov HaGudvach. The nice story is about a famous rabbi whose name was the Chacham Tzvi, Rabbi Ashkenazi. He led a very challenging life. A terrible accident claimed the life of his first wife and his daughter. And he was forced to wander around the globe. And eventually he settled in a city and he became engaged to the daughter of the rabbi, who unusually, for rabbis, was very, very wealthy. And he put aside an amount of money to allow Rabbi Ashkenazi, the Chacham Tzvi, to sit for the rest of his life and study and be a rabbi and never have to worry about his livelihood. Of course, the money sitting under his mattress didn't make any money, and someone suggested that there's a local wealthy businessman named Shimon, and he would be a wise man to make a deal with him, let him invest, they'll share the profits, that will be good for everybody. So he met with this Shimon, and they discussed the plan, they pulled out a contract. In fact, Shimon's father, who was one of the leaders of the community, agreed to co-sign the agreement and take full responsibility in case something happened to the money. One year went by, two years went by, Shimon was very successful, the capital was growing, they looked at the rabbi, could sit for a hundred years, study, without ever having to worry about anything. But then a bad investment was made and all of the money was lost. Shimon, the investor, was so upset and so embarrassed, ashamed to show his face, that he just left the town and began to wander from city to city, ashamed to show his face and admit to the rabbi what he had done with the money. There was nothing wrong or illegal, just a stupid decision. When the father, who had co-signed the loan, who co-signed this investment, heard that the money was lost and his son was wandering and he knew he didn't have enough money to pay back the rabbi. He got sick and he was in bed. He couldn't get out of bed and the best doctors came to visit him. And they all said, this is not medical. This is something up in the head and in the heart. There's nothing we can do. And from day to day, the father was getting weaker and weaker and God forbid, approaching his death. Somehow, word trickled down to the Chacham Tzvi what had happened to this family, that Shimon, the wealthy investor, had left his family and left everything behind because he had lost the money, and the father who had co-signed was now sick in bed, and God forbid, on his last days. Immediately, the Chacham Tzvi called two witnesses to his house, and he pulled out the document that the father had co-signed, and he said, in your presence I hereby declare that I nullify this debt, I forgive it, they don't owe me anything, not the son, not Shimon, not his father, they are free of all obligations. And he tore the note to pieces and handed it to the witnesses. The witnesses went immediately to the house of Shimon's father, who was lying on his deathbed, and they told him what they had witnessed, and they showed him the torn documents. To everyone's shock, pleasant shock, he immediately sat up in bed and was able to resume his life. And he sent word to his son, and Shimon was able to return to his family, to his wife, to his children, and to his city and his community. How many times in life are we asked to inconvenience ourselves for someone else's sake? I'll let, I'll let most people go in front of me at Sam's or Costco's. I'll let someone step in front of me onto a train, onto the plane. Would I give up my seat for somebody? Would I give away my future earnings, my savings? that's meant to make my life great because of someone else's feelings? I doubt it. But from this lesson, maybe we can draw inspiration of what it means to care about another person and do what we can to make their lives better. Have a great week.